It's interesting because, you know, we always think about crypto as in part being born out of the financial crisis, people turning to crypto out of mistrust of the financial system. But we're standing here today and Sam Bankman Fried is about to potentially testify at his own trial. And you've had many have investors be very burned by the downfall of crypto last year. So how then do they regain trust now? Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you look at the Sam Bakerman free trial, we don't think that that's representative of the crypto industry. You know, if you look at businesses like Coinbase, I think what you've seen is that for the last decade, uh, we've been building in a trusted way, helping people understand how to use crypto in an easy, secure way. Um, and people have really leaned into that. And I think the challenge that we've seen at the same time is that because of a lack of clear regulatory environment, um, increasingly folks have also been pushed into offshore unregulated environments like SPF, which has led to bad outcomes. And so I think the thing that we need to be doing to rebuild trust is to be investing in these clearer policy frameworks. Um, and that's exactly what we looked at with this report. And we think that there's a ton of appetite and a ton of urgency from the American people around getting clear regulations in place so that crypto can be used as this powerful tool to upgrade our systems. Now, when we're talking about crypto, are we talking about crypto at large or are we talking about Bitcoin, Jesse? I think we're talking about crypto at large. You know, Bitcoin was obviously the first uh, crypto that kind of brought this technology onto the scene. But over the last decade, we've seen how crypto can be used in a ton of different ways beyond just money. And I think increasingly people are seeing this kind of like the next generation of the Internet, where they're seeing crypto as a tool that can take these financial systems, which in many cases have been around for, you know, 100 years and haven't really been upgraded, uh, and use that technology to upgrade those systems and make them actually work better for everyday people. Now, what are people actually using crypto mostly for at large these days? Is, this, is it an investment? Is it a payment rail? And if it's a payment rail, when you look at how it's used in America, why would it be any better than how we use any other credit card company or other type of form of payment? Yeah, I think when crypto originally kind of started, uh, it was definitely mostly used as an investment. That was kind of the early days of crypto. I think what we're seeing increasingly now is that crypto is expanding its utility. Uh, and that's really where we're focused as a business, uh, seeing how crypto can be used for payments, uh, how it can be used for commerce, how it can be used to support creators who are making music and, and doing other kinds of activities on the Internet. And I think that's where we see the most opportunity in the future. Uh, in terms of how this is actually going to be better than the systems that we have today, I think if you look at these systems, uh, in many cases, uh, people are paying really high fees. For instance, the average small business uh, pays 3% of their profit, which is 50% of their overall mar margin, to credit card processors. Uh, we think there's an opportunity to use crypto to lower those fees for small businesses, to make payments faster and easier for everyday people, and to open up a ton of access to people who don't have access today. You think about colleges and universities. When you look at what's happening on campus, is there anything that's happening there that tells you the direction of travel for the industry? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, Americans uh, have been promised this American dream for a long time. And I think for older generations, that was very much the case. But, but people in my generation, I think what we've seen is we were told, go to college, you'll get a good job, you will you know, get to buy a house. Uh, and, and in fact, we went to college and we got debt. And there weren't jobs. Uh, and it was impossible to buy a house. And I think that this is leading to people to say, hey, these systems aren't working for us. And we need new systems. Um, and people are looking to say, hey, how can I find new ways to make money? How can I uh, you know, have different kinds of jobs that uh, give me access in different ways to the economy? Uh, and they see crypto as a really, really powerful tool for upgrading these systems. And so I think what we're seeing on, on college campuses and, and what we're seeing in, in folks who maybe are dropping out of college and aren't following the traditional path is this excitement and this energy to find new pathways that can lead to that American dream that currently today is unachievable. You were also very involved in the creation of BASE. And when you look at what not just clients and customers and people who are buying and using crypto in terms of Coinbase customers, how are other members of the community thinking about new use cases? Yeah, people are building all sorts of things on base. Uh, and we like to think about base as kind of on-chain, uh, like online happened in the early 2000s. And what this means is it's a really powerful platform where new kinds of applications are emerging. So we're using uh, people build applications that are uh, helping small businesses with loyalty. We're seeing people build new kinds of games. Uh, we're seeing people bring music on-chain. Uh, and in general, we're seeing people embrace crypto as this incredibly powerful platform that's actually making it uh, easier, better, faster, cheaper for people to transact uh, and to engage on the internet. 
I'm going to push you a little here, Jesse, because I get pushed on this too. Why is it a better mousetrap than what we already have? Yeah. So, like I said, again, most of the systems that we're operating in uh, are tens or hundreds of years old. And what that means is it means that people are paying high fees. Uh, it means that when they're trying to move money, it maybe takes three to five days. Uh, it means that the people who are uh, controlling those systems are very select few. And I think the, the opportunity with on-chain uh, is, is the opportunity to bring more people in, to lower those fees, to make transactions faster, and to make it so that we can rebuild these systems uh, that can give better outcomes to everyday people. And again, going back to our State of Crypto report, what we're seeing is that um, excitement about crypto is not a partisan issue. You know, Democrats and Republicans and uh, independents are adopting crypto at the same rates. Instead, it's a generational issue. Um, and what that means, it means that young people today, because they're seeing this opportunity to use this technology to update the systems, they're almost three times as likely to own crypto. Um, young people are uh, saying they're majority likely to go and vote for candidates who are supporting crypto. And I think young people are saying, um, uh, you're either with us or you're behind us. We are going to take these new technologies, we are going to upgrade these systems, and we're going to make a better America, whether you are on our team or not. We want you to be here. Jesse, we want to work with you. Jesse, do you ever feel... But we want to do this together. Do you ever feel like sometimes the industry is trying to accomplish too much? You gave us a, a ton of potential use, use cases. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see that that many exist. But if it's trying to compete with so many existing systems, what's the narrative? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, you could have said the same thing about the Internet in the early 2000s, right? Is the Internet trying to upgrade all of our world, to come online? And I think if we look now, you know, a decade, two decades later, what we've seen is the Internet has transformed the world. And I think we see the same opportunity here. And we're not just seeing it kind of in the abstract. We are seeing it in the concrete every single day. You know, I talk to people who are using crypto to transact to people who are using and adopting crypto, like at Blackbird uh, in New York City restaurants, uh, to make better connections with their customers and drive more revenue for their small businesses, to artists who are using crypto to build more meaningful connections with their fans, and to financial institutions you know, like JP Morgan, like Coinbase, that are using crypto to lower settlement times and to increase the efficiency of these systems. And so we believe that, like the internet, on-chain has the opportunity to completely transform our world for the better.